Welcome to the Learning Project Network, where we learn through stories to make a change. The Learning Project Network, an organization dedicated to social justice issues. We are dedicated to learning about issues that impact children, families, and communities to help start conversations that lead to solutions. We believe that through storytelling and peer support, individuals can better understand how experiences lead to outcomes. Hey everybody, it's me, Stephanie, back again with another great podcast. I have Ms. Zadora on with us. Hey, hey girl. Okay. Let me tell you, you know how you meet somebody and they just are like your kindred spirit? Like, I feel like that would be Miss Adora. I love you so much, Queen. I'm so excited that you stopped by the Learning Project. Today, we are highlighting some great conversation around mental health. It is Black History Month. And we know, I keep telling you guys, Black History Month should be celebrated within our context of American history, should be celebrated all year long, um, learning about ourselves, about our history, um, how we have created, overcome, developed, been a part of this great uh, story of where so many of us are today. And I say great story because our ancestors did not have these opportunities and for where, to where we are right now, we still have a lot of work to do. However, um, we are our ancestors' wildest dreams and being able to share and speak and specifically talk about mental health, y'all, okay? Miss Adora, please, please introduce yourself and tell our audience, who are you? Oh, who am I? Who am I? I am just the all magnificent Zadora Williams. <laughs> Black queen, Virgo goddess, the light, the healer, sunflower Z. I mean, all things that are bright and radiant. That mm -hmm. is me. That is the energy I bring. So. I'm glad that you have me here. And I just want to say like, yes, Kendra Spirits. I yes. feel the same about you. A woman with a purpose and clear on a vision. And that is so much of who I am. Yeah. I'm on a, a mission to heal my community. And it's purposely led. Mm. I'm not doing it because I want to. Of course I want to. But this is what I was put on earth to do. So mm. I'm just living in my purpose and being authentically me, the yeah. social twerker, the everything, <laughs> bringing all aspects into the healing realm. Yeah. Because we need that authenticity. Yeah. And that's what I bring into a space yeah. is my energy that people undeniably are just attracted to and yeah. gravitate to, but also that authenticity of, Yo, I done been there. <laughs> and I keeps it all the way uh, 100 with folks. Yeah. And that's that's me. Like, I love to be, to show duality. Like, I you can be it. this and this, this and this. Yeah. And you still the bomb. Yes. I, I love that you're talking about this because for a lot of our listeners and our viewers, you know, when we talk about mental health and we're talking about the Black community, these are, this is a taboo, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the phrases that frequently comes up in many people's um, surroundings is what happens in the house stays in the house. Ooh. Uh, so Ooh, can, yes. we, can we unpack that for a minute? And, and Zadora, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about your credentials and yes. why that quote that I just, said like really hit you and yes. yes let's unpack it so as she said so I'm a licensed clinical social worker I've been a social worker for going on 10 years now and all my career has been spent providing mental health and wellness services mm -hmm. um I've worked with of course a diverse group of uh folks serving their mental wellness needs but my heart and my passion is with my black community so that's what even prompted me to start my private practice, Center yeah. for Center for Healing, where I provide culturally specific mental health healing services, mm -hmm. you know? And that is me. Zadora is Black mental health and wellness, as well as the mama's advocate, the child advocate, the family yes. advocate. Like people yes. know, if Zadora's in a board meeting, a school board meeting, just know she's coming with fire because she's not playing with y'all about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's a little more credentially as well as I'm also um, specialized in perinatal mental health services because it's another area that we don't address within Black communities is postpartum depression. Yes. Anxiety. 
Yes. Birth trauma. Yes. And all of that. And it's like, oh, our mamas and daddies been struggling and not knowing because we just don't talk about it. And it yep. looks like this. It can look like anger. It can look like this. And it's like, no, actually, you guys. Yeah. Oh, that was related to your pregnancy. Like, so yeah. that's oh, a little bit of background on who I am, uh, what I'm here to do. Yeah. Um, I'm here to heal my people. I love it. Myself, you know, I started. I love it. it. So, why does that quote, what happens in the house, stays in the house, resonate resonate with you and the community you've been working with? Because um, that's our narrative for so many Black folks growing up is we keep our business in the house. You don't share, you definitely don't go speak to no shrink. Uh, No. Because you know, you're definitely not no baby snatcher. No. All they're going to do is come take your babies. They're not here to help. Yep. Yep, so yep, yep. that narrative of keeping it in the house, that means let's keep our pain inside. Hmm. Let's not talk about the harm because when we talk about it, guess what? You might actually find out like that actually happened to such and such as well. Mm-hmm. That happened yeah. to such, oh no. Oh, that person did this to you too. You know, it, it becomes uh, unfolding. That can be very challenging. You know, when you're talking about black families and mental health, Yes, the onion, it becomes, okay, if I address this, I have to address that. If I acknowledge your pain, I got to acknowledge my own pain. So yeah, let's just keep this in the house. Let's not even bring it up. Hold on. We don't, we don't talk about mental health. The press, what? Oh my goodness. Y'all, I'm trying to keep it together right now. Um, If y'all are watching the video, you see me like holding back right now because the door, you're hitting some key things. You know, a lot of times when we start dealing with our own pain, we start having to bring other people into the story and unlocking their pain. And this is a generational thing. When we think about history and we think about trauma and we think about pain, we have normalized it so much that we don't even realize that some of the things that we're actually seeing, such as our sadness, our anger, our depression, our um, our ability to shine, our ability to be confident in ourselves. I love how you spoke about yourself so freely um, in the beginning of our conversation and some people may say well why do you need to say that well why do you need to do that there's that shrinking down that we yes. and it's so embedded and in deep into slavery and yes. into trauma that that many people of color have faced but specifically today we're going to be talking about black people there are some intersectionalities here that you will see and yep. hear and it will resonate with you but today we're going to be really focusing on the black community and what do we need to do to really have have the conversation, be brave enough to Mm. confront the thing that is holding us back from where we want to go and to make change. So Zadora, tell us like your top five. What is one of the things that, one of the reasons why Black people really need to focus on their healing? Um, But before you do that, there is a quote that I have um, really came up with and it really resonated with me and it resonates with this um, conversation. And I had wrote that Black history is about healing the trauma that your ancestors could not. Hmm. And, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about the greatness of people and we're celebrating all of these wonderful things that are happening during Black history, that is wonderful. But a piece of that greatness comes with healing, that that understanding that we have to confront the demons, we have to confront the trauma, we have to confront the mindset, we have to confront Mm -hmm. all of it in order to really make this trauma that many people have faced history. So what are your top five reasons why Black people should absolutely um, seek out mental health? Well, I'm going to say just starting with one where we just started at the whole narrative of what happens here stays here. Keep this Mm -hmm. in the house. Baby, I've just started like a movement of I'm putting my business in the streets. (laughs) This is the time to intentionally put your business in the streets because what we have learned historically is we've been keeping it in. So Mm -hmm. then that leaves us feeling alone, Mm -hmm. isolated. Black folks be going through it, feeling like, I mean, I literally had held a workshop in December, parenting, parenting through stress and anxiety. Hmm. And the moms in that group, they was like, just hearing the other mom stories with anxiety. They was like, oh my God, 
I did not, I've been thinking I'm going crazy. Mm. I didn't know that other, like the way I react in the moment with my kids is not how I want to. And I thought it was me losing it. But mm. this, this is what happens when I'm anxious mm. and I'm not, yes. Mm. So it's like, even now, it's so much of, we're still not sharing the information or what our experiences are that we're struggling with. Mm-hmm. And it's causing us to struggle alone. Yep. Causing us to see, to keep the narrative alive of like, yeah. I won't be supported when mm-hmm. really it's like, you're not asking. You're not even vulnerable enough to ask or say what's going on to be supported. So number one, what that brings me to is practicing vulnerability. Mm-hmm. We have to go there. Mm. it's okay can, to go there can we can we stop real quick and t- put a pin in that because that just yeah. makes me mm, okay <laughs> uh, you feel it right yeah <laughs> so when you talk about being vulnerable one of the quotes that comes to mind is i can't trust other women mm-hmm. i can't be vulnerable with people because mm-hmm. there's such a deep mistrust what do you say to that, that, that person that is thinking about those things when you just said that? And feel free to unpack that oh, tip oh, and we can, in that section. Yes. Um, I would say, feel your feels and do it anyway. Hmm. It's okay to feel hesitant, to feel like you don't trust that, but still practice vulnerability. That actually just came up in my women's, my Black women's support group this yeah. week because before we get into any topics or addressing what the support issue is, I'm like, we're starting with trust and vulnerability. Mm. What does that look like to you? Mm. What does that mean to you in a space with eight other Black women? Mm. What are the barriers to that? And you mm. know, one queen in there, of course, a lot of us have Black women trauma. She was like, just being in a space with Black women. Wow. Like, I just, this is me practicing vulnerability because I've been harmed by Ooh. many Black women in my life mama auntie you know it's like okay and she's in the space to try because not every black woman is going to harm you yeah you have to keep exposing yourself to opportunities to experience that other that's going to combat that yeah. that narrative so you don't get hard that yeah. high chakra doesn't get blocked and you're like oh yeah this black girl you know they did me this way in this relationship this friendship and i don't trust black women and it's like no it was those black women mm. And maybe where you were operating out of, where were you at vibrationally? Where Mm. were you? Because if you attracted women that did you wrong, you know, there's always a role to play in in these different relationships. We both, I have a role, you have a role. I allow you to treat me a certain way and you treat me a certain way. Mm. So, yeah. That's deep. That's deep. One of the things that you said just now that really resonated with me was practicing vulnerability. Mm-hmm. how do you practice vulnerability I know you mentioned about putting yourself in spaces with black women but if someone's saying what does this really mean like how do you practice vulnerability you start small mm-hmm. and this is this is my personal journey of practicing vulnerability is starting small with that little casual somebody asks you how's your day at the grocery store mm-hmm. and you just challenge yourself to answer authentically mm-hmm. like I'm practicing being vulnerable. I'm not just going to say the good, fine, great, even though I'm having a rough day. So I started challenging myself on those small that we take for granted interactions that it's like, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. Uh, how am I doing today? Actually, I'm overwhelmed. My kids were wild. And did you see them? <laughs> today? And I got this to do. And it's just like, okay, that was a perfect stranger. And I challenged myself to express what was really going on and give them an opportunity to actually be authentic because they're also used to their everyday, fine, fine. And I'm like, oh, I had a rough day. And then that gave them the opportunity to share. They like, okay, I could take off my coat. Like, wow, yeah, it's been a crazy day in here too. I was, yeah. And it's like that, bringing that humanistic, that empathy, that realness back to the forefront. Like mm-hmm. the superficialness has to, to let that go a little bit so that we can actually lean in a little bit more that is so deep y'all if you did not hear that I want you to replay that (laughs) and if you know someone that needs to hear this conversation do not send them flowers do not send them candy you know my motto send them a podcast send them something that will feel their soul and spirit 
<laughs> wait a minute. Why I'm at a point where the gifts that I be giving it be healing gifts. I'm like, yes. if you get a gift from me, no, it's going to be to something to better your mind, body, or spirit. <laughs> That's just where I'm at in life. I want everybody to get this work that I'm giving out gifts of healing now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, yeah, I'm so into these healing gifts because yes. it really tells the other person that not only are you loving them, you seeing them, you want them to live their best life. You're yes. affirming them in yes. their healing journey. Um, yes. I just created like a shirt and it says healing first, sis. I've and, seen that. And I was like, go off. She already, <laughs> I was Sis, we already yes because you know yes. and I was like I need to remind myself of the space I need to be in because I can't have the relationships I can't be transparent not even with other people sometimes you can't even be transparent with yourself and that's and the real thing if you can't be vulnerable with yourself right you got to go there first right you admit to yourself what it really is yeah you and, truly feeling yeah and it's hard because once you hear something out loud it rocks your 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 fake truth right it rocks your fake truth mask off mask off okay mm -hmm. just the exposure is so intense and for some people they feel it on such a intense level because we have learned to protect ourselves in many ways. You know what I mean? And a lot of times when we are protecting ourselves, we hurt ourselves. And mm -hmm. when we hurt ourselves, we start hurting other people. And this is something that we see very as a vicious cycle within the Black community, um, specifically with Black women. But we also, this is the crazy thing when I, when I hear you talking about practicing vulnerability and, and really diving into the step two, we also know the deep-seated love yes. that is given within Black spaces. Exactly. And when you have that love and you have that sense of humanity and peace and, and, and connection and you experience it, or even if you see it and you start to long for it, it becomes a, a hole in your heart until you're able to fulfill that and you're able to seek that out. So what's your next uh, tip for us? Why should people be seeking out mental health during uh, their entire life? <laughs> Baby, because if you want to live your best life, you should be taking care of it because your mental health is the center. It's the mm -hmm. end all be all. Yeah, you know, yes. what happens mentally will manifest physically. Mm. So if you live in a life of stress and anxiety, you're probably living a life of some chronic health issues such as hypertension. You might be battling autoimmune diseases. Yeah. Anything related to stress, skin rash, all these things. This yes. is right. that mental is important, baby, because <laughs> it's the power. So, it, yeah, it, it it really is. And I just had to bring this up because I feel like we don't talk about um about this enough. So Black Americans are 20% more likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population. This is something that I want to highlight during our conversation because our trauma manifests in so many ways and we don't even recognize it exactly what you were saying through health problems, through skin problems. Um, we have normalized all of these things and we have said, you know what? Um, you know, everybody, you know, has, you know, uh, pain like that, or a uh, grandma used to have pain like this, or I used to have stuff like this. We have normalized it so much that we don't even think there's a solution to the problem. But this is the one thing I want you to remember as you're going through your own healing journey in that healing space, it takes time for that healing to happen and so what I see sometimes is and I can just speak for myself um you know I'll go and I'll go to a counselor or I'll go and do like self-care and really deal with my mind body soul spirit and I'm like okay I did this and I feel good and the next day I'll have a bad day and I feel like it didn't work so you know because I didn't see that instant gratification then I say to myself well this doesn't work so I'm not gonna go you know, right. this is a waste of time. I don't have time to be opening up these boxes and then I can't function. Yes. And so Ooh, that's, that's how you know. One. Yeah, L let's unpack that. Because so that yes. that's a big one. Like even, and that's why 
it comes with being an, also an intentional therapist. Mm. Uh, if you can dysregulate your client, please don't send them back out there at the end, dysregulate it. Like there needs to be grounding before I even send you out. Because Ooh. what I just brought up, you could go hop in your car and get into an accident. Like yes. people get dysregulated. I get dysregulated in therapy myself. Like I'll be yeah. like, you just why I want to come because I ain't got time to be <laughs> in my fields for the next couple hours, you right. know. So it really becomes even being intentional with you knowing your process. Yeah. Like, you know what? I know when I go to therapy, sometimes depending on what comes up, I might need my own care plan, my after therapy care plan. Yes. It consists of me, maybe I'm taking me a little sacred herb bath just to combat whatever feels came up. Maybe I'm detoxing because. My stress response hit in that session. And, you know, let me just continue to get these toxins out. Yes. You know, so being mindful of that, man, it really is a journey. And one of the things to highlight what you were speaking to is the journey is to have grace with yourself. Mm. Have grace because you're learning. You're unlearning however long, 30 plus years of living, of conditioning, of how you should do something. You're unlearning that. Yeah. So of course you can learn that skill, practice it, and it can work this time. And then you could try it the next time and be like, oh, it didn't work this time. Oh, it doesn't ever work. No, that's why that healthy mindset, that healthy mental health is important because you can hold space for, oh, it didn't work this time. Okay, why? Hmm. What was different? Maybe I didn't, did I, how long did I engage in my, my straw breathing? How long did I do this? Or did I even actually try to challenge the anxiety that came up or did I let it consume me and just say, oh, it's never going to get better. Mm. So, you know, it comes back to just knowing that the journey is long. There's going to be good days. There's going to be great days. And there's going to still, you're still going to have those days where it sucks <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. The beauty is that you're on your journey and your commitment. Consistency is what will get you there. That part. Let and give break. up at the first speed bump or the second or the third because life is full of it. It is. It is. Can I stop it? <laughs> it? It's not. And you know what's so crazy? When you're talking about this, well, actually, let me back up. This is not crazy. This is an awakening moment. Yes. Okay. I want to be intentional yes. with this conversation right here. Uh -huh. Sometimes there are things that happen in your life that awaken things that yes. you that were, have been dormant, that you thought that you healed from. And I'm going to give an example of my own personal experience. So when I had my daughter, I started feeling a lot of things that I had not felt before, but I always knew that they were there and I never dealt with them. Yep. And I started to ask myself, what do I need? And I remember it was like two, three o'clock in the morning. I was crying. I was like, what is wrong with me? I'm a strong woman. I got everything. Everything's going good. Nothing wrong with me. I came to the conclusion that my daughter erupted something. She disrupted this, this part of me, which really focuses on self-love. And that's why I've been talking a lot about this because I want my daughter to have a very healthy relationship with others herself. And I want her to be so grounded in her own self of, of, of love. And I know that I cannot help her unpack some of those things and really model it if I don't deal with it myself. Yes. And I've always felt like this hasn't been an issue, but mm -hmm. when I had my daughter, I will tell you guys, some of you guys are going to go through these metamorphoses or these changes that really rock the way you've seen yourself and you literally become a new person. And so as you were saying that, that really spoke to me mm -hmm. and really resonated in this awakening piece that I am in my life right now. Yes. Since it's awakening all over, the divine feminine is all up in the space. Yes. Everywhere causing awakenings. Hold on. I'm going to turn my heat off because it's frying my thigh. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Zadora, tell us your next tip. Okay. Okay, next tip will be assertive, hmm. be assertive. And that comes with 
it taps back on to that self-love. It's like it's steps. It's things you need to do. But yeah. you can even practice assertiveness even when your love is not all the way there for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that can become an act of self-love. Is yes. I'm challenging myself to say what my needs are and express them and also be mindful of what the other person needs are. Yes. And it's like I'm honoring myself because I'm not going to allow for myself to get in the way of my needs getting met and I'm not going to allow for someone else to step over what it is that I say I need. If you're asking for support, if you feel like, hey, I've been at home, I'm a mom, I'm, it's six months in, uh, I really, you ask your partner like, hey, can, I'm ready to have just a mom stay out. You're communicating your needs. Hey, I'm overwhelmed. I feel yeah. stressed. I want a day out just to be me before I was mom. Yeah. And communicate that. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be received. Okay? Yes. You say that. Just because you're practicing assertiveness and communicating what your needs are, it does not mean that they're going to get met. But you still want to have the practice of doing it so that you're in the habit of feeling comfortable expressing what's going on and asking for someone to meet your needs so it opens up the opportunity for them to be met. Ah, mm-hmm. man, yes. let me tell you, let's unpack this. Yes. We are as women and specifically, I would, I'm going to again yeah. reiterate, this is going to be focusing on black women, how we are dealing with different things. I hope these, this conversation is a great learning space for a lot of people listening to this that um, have black clients. If you are a sister, a mother, a friend, this part is really challenging right here um, because a lot of times assertiveness is, has stigmas to it. Okay. Oh, yes. um, one of them is uh, the angry black woman. Yeah. Um, the other one is being difficult. Yep. Um, the other one is not being loud, clear, being loud. Um, there's so many words that go into when you say assertive and you say mm-hmm. black women. And yes. there are individuals who avoid that. They do not um, want to look challenging. They do not want to seem uh, angry or upset or frustrated. Mm -hmm. And we don't practice this enough between each other as women, um, because we know a lot of times if someone is being assertive or drawing boundaries, sometimes that can actually cause damage to a relationship or Mm -hmm. end a relationship. Oh, yeah. And that fear of ending a relationship or breaking a relationship, that becomes the center of the reason why people don't want to be exactly. assertive and share what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Right. Um, how do you overcome or what advice do you have for those that are listening to overcome that fear of being assertive? And mm-hmm. what advice do you have for people that have friendships that they need to be more assertive in and mm-hmm. speak their truth um, as they move forward um, with this tip? Okay, so I know I'm gonna have to have you break the question down again for me because you know it's I'm okay. Gonna, gonna I literally it's, asked you ten million questions all in one. Okay. So the first piece, um, how do you? What was it? How do you do it? Yes, yes. How does a person yes. overcome that fear of being assertive? So that's where you have to challenge yourself. Like this is mental challenging. Yeah. Of going through and actually examining. Um, how many times is that that thing you're worried about, that fear, whatever it is, mm-hmm. has it actually come true, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we're often in this fearful place, but we don't even have evidence to back it up. It's just mm-hmm. the fear, right? If I am assertive, if I'm assertive and I ask for a raise because I'm entitled to it and I've been busting my butt as a sister, right. they fear that they're going to get fired. Yes. So they don't ask for it. Right. But it's like, okay, that fear. But if you, if you were to ask for raise and they find you for it, does it make sense? Like that would go against company policy. Like then we're looking at other things. Like, let me show you the infrastructure of like, let's just poke flaws in this, poke holes and we get down to, you have nothing to be worried about. Hmm. Nothing to be worried about. This is yeah. here for a reason. Yeah. It's to keep you where you at. Yeah. Where you want to stay. So it started asking kind of what we, you know, those, Questions that elicit change talk like how bad do you really want something yeah. are you willing to let this feeling because that's what it is yeah you got to accept it and call it what it, anxiety is a feeling 
Yeah. It's not a state that you're forever going to be in, but yeah. that's the way Western medicine pushes it so that people yes. can remain sick and think they're sick all the time. No, let's bring it back. Depression, it's a feeling. Anxiety, feeling. Do we feel it more than others? Some? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you bring it back that it's a feeling. Yeah. You can move through your feelings. Yeah. So you move through it, challenging and trying to reduce the anxiety. For me, I have to challenge myself with the talk. Okay. I write it out. Yeah. If I'm concerned that this is going to happen. All right. Yeah. I say this is going to end this relationship. If I say, hey, I would actually appreciate if you actually called and asked me how I'm doing and not just call me and dump on me all the time. Mm. That's assertiveness and you're setting a boundary. But yeah. if you're worried that your friend may not, oh, if I do it, it's like, okay, then if you set a boundary and do that, then that don't need to be your friend. Right. So it's like facing what the, what is the realities of what's really underneath there and dealing with that. So then you can handle the situation. I agree. Because if you're, it's like, you can't control, this is one of the things. Yeah. You cannot control the other person's feelings. Yeah. If you're speaking, if you are advocating for what your needs are and that offends the person you're telling it to, or they don't want to be friends with you because you set a boundary around your time, your mental health capacity, mm. then guess what? That's, that, that, that's been a one-sided friendship. Wow. Now you know where you need to let go. Right. Bye. Right. And it's, you know, the thing is about, friendship and about like relationships is it's going to either help you grow yeah. and or it's going to shut you down yeah and it will keep you stagnant yes right? yes and I've had to learn just over this last couple of years like relationships are not meant to be the same and for people I'm a Virgo too and I like consistency like I like everything to be the same but that's not how life works and that's not how people work and you have to decide on how you are going to move through these relationships so that you can grow so that you can learn what's mm-hmm. your last tip for us Zadora you hit the other question so I don't need you to ask them okay so the last thing I would say is You have to find a way to love on yourself. Hmm. Honest, self-love is so crucial. It's Hmm. so critical. That's why everything has been set up to make you focus on everything else. The other person. Like, where do you actually see messages? This is a narrative that I'm starting. And I have been. I've been just telling myself, I love me. Hmm. And I tell other people to say that to yourself. Like, when is the last time you told yourself, I love you? Mm. We're so conditioned to give it outwardly. We don't give it to ourselves. So mm-hmm. starting there of knowing like self-love is what helps you be assertive. Wow. When you love yourself, you honor yourself. Mm. You're not going to let anybody treat you some way. You know your worth and your value and you stand on that because it's like, oh, I'm here. I And I know me. Right. And you're not going to take anything less, right? Yes. Same yes. way we advocate for our kids. Mm. You know, we give this advocacy to everybody else. Hmm. it's time to give it to yourself yeah I need you the way you show love and you love on your children you love on your partner I need you to say think about hmm how do I actually show that I love myself do I even do the things that I do for everybody else for me wow yeah so bringing that in is amp on on your self-love if you don't love you start practicing fine pieces of you to love and build from there it's not an easy journey I'm 30 years in and I only began loving myself three years ago. Mm. And that really blossomed over the last year. Yeah. So now I'm at this place where I'm like, I am who I am. Right. And I love Z. All right. of them. Okay. Even the clothes. <laughs> okay. I'm, in, I'm receiving all of this right now, this conversation, because self-love impacts so much. It does. And it can, your, your ability to not love yourself impacts every aspect of your life. And I wanted, I wanted us to have this conversation because so many of us do not feel like we deserve love or we don't know what real love looks like because we have let people, um, love us in a way that is toxic, right? Mm. Today, 
Today I was on this app called Peanut, y'all. I'm on this, this app called Peanut a lot because uh, I love listening to people's stories. And it's about a bunch of moms talking. But they, they said something. Um, they were like, the question was, how do you know you're in a uh, like toxic relationship? And that was the question. And I had responded. One of the things that resonated with me, somebody had asked me this before. And um, the thing I will say this is when you're in a toxic relationship, you have to ask yourself, how does it affect your mental, your, men, your, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, and your environment? that's how if if it's affecting you in a negative way and it's literally causing this reaction within your body and around you and how you react to other other people you possibly could be in a toxic situation but a lot of times we look at toxic situations with another person we don't look at a toxic person being yourself and being how you treat yourself right And when you talk down to yourself, when you don't love yourself, when you don't um, care for yourself, when you don't see yourself, how does that make you feel mind, body, soul, and spirit? And how does it make you interact with the environment around you? That is like a question and a phrase and a reflection all in one that I have to continually go back to because it allows me to remember that being toxic is something that can be cleaned up. It's something that could be worked on. It's something that you can move forward with, but you have to do the work. And I think there's so much negative connotation around the word toxic. Like, oh, that's a toxic person. Let's throw away that person. They talk. Right, and it's not like that. And it's You're not, not like, like that. It's not like that. Like you, you learn, mm-hmm. at least navigating relationships, this is what you learn. Like some people are going to be who they are. Absolutely. And if you, if you value that relationship, you learn how to incorporate what we call radical acceptance. Uh-huh. You accept them for who they are and what they do provide. No, they don't meet this need the way you want it, but you still get some type of value from that relationship. So yes. it's not a, a one and done like, yeah, I was being vulnerable and they, I expressed and they was like, okay, they didn't meet me with no empathy or nothing. It was just, okay. Well, now, you know, you practice great job. That's not the one you want to do it with. Right. But they still, but you know what? They offer something that's valuable to you still. So mm-hmm. it's like you learn to navigate, understanding that everybody is human. Yes. We all have our things. Yes. We all have our things. So right. do you want to throw away this person because of that one thing, but you still have these mutual beneficial assets? Mm-hmm. And then you just try to get that other me that, of course, we're going to try to get a meet somewhere else. Absolutely. Or you need yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I love this so much. Um, you did something really amazing, Zadora. So I have to bring it out right away. Um, yes. Tell us about the project that you yes. have put together to really help create support groups for Black people. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you and okay. why you wanted to do this. Well, I was inspired by my own health journey, my mm-hmm. own physical health journey from stress, and anxiety that turned and manifested physically. So I battled my own issues, developed an autoimmune disease. This is all within the, pan- the time of the pandemic. Wow. Literally. Uh, so developed that experience, shingles, which is yes, the old people thing. The thing yeah. people get in their 60s. Yes, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a hot 30 something. Okay, <laughs> so I shouldn't be dealing with that type of level of stress. Yeah. But you know, that's what propelled me into my own healing journey. Hmm. Uh, Looking at alternative, like peeling that layer back once again, being real with me about what was affecting my mental health at that moment. Yeah. And making a hard, very hard decision. And I will say when it comes to, when you have to honor yourself, no matter what, when you do have that self-love, Hmm. It is the leg you need to stand on to make those difficult decisions to get out of those toxic relationships. Wow. I've been in a toxic marriage. Mm. And I didn't realize it until, you know, I mean, you realize it and then you hide from it. And then you realize it and then you get out and you see so much yeah. of what it was. But if it wasn't for me having that, my physical health compromise, where I started engaging in multiple forms of healing, energy healing, chakra balancing, Reiki. Mm. I started um, seeing tarot readers, even getting readings done. Mm. I'm doing, and then my therapy, I was even on, I wasn't even getting regular therapy because 
I'm on standby. I was on standby with my current there. Wow. So yeah, you're starting to, a lot of people are hearing, I'm hearing that from a lot of people that yeah. they are not able to get into therapists or even yep. some groups because yes. uh, there's like not enough people. It's doing not, that. it's not enough black clinicians and everybody wants to process with someone that's representative of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what me incorporating different, like I said, holistic as well as indigenous forms of healing tools. Man. Yeah. Yeah. We're a part of our healing before we were, you know, kidnapped, stolen, mm -hmm. and all of those things. So mm -hmm. it's like drumming, mm -hmm. emulating our nervous system, really tapping into sound. Wow. And I just took what I learned and also the healing benefits because baby girl, I reversed my autoimmune disease. But just wow. in 2021, I was in remission. Wow. No markers, none of this, no more rashes, flare ups. And it was from, that's what, loving me, making a decision about where I was supposed to be, a godly decision, I will say, because God already told me, yeah. get out of this, get out of that. Yeah. I didn't listen. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's so much. You have to incorporate the spirits. It's yeah. all these pieces. You have to be working on them. And you cannot yeah. just focus on physical health, hitting the gym, therapy, or mental health. And no, you need to be spoken on your spiritual, your physical, your mental. So that's why I created mm -hmm. the Can We Just Talk support group for Black men and Black women. Because I wanted to hold space knowing that a lot of Black folks have been needing support in their own way. Wow. They've been over, it's been over a year and they're not happy. They haven't connected with a therapist. So I wanted to bring a space for multiple people to get healing and then also introduce these other forms of healing that Black, a lot of us, our folks don't really connect to because we think it's of whiteness yeah. or, you know, it's just been misconstrued as something we don't do. And it's like, yeah. but this is the reason why we do have those health outcomes that we have. Mm. It's not just racism and the effects of it is also like, hey, They've been engaging in these treatments. They get acupuncture. They've mm. been using Reiki. Mm. They've been engaging using crystal healing. They've yeah. been doing all these, and we think it's woo 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 woo. Yeah, and it's like, baby, no, that stuff has power. That is, yeah. you have to get reconnect with the earth, the land. Yeah, yeah. So. I I love that you're talking about this. And for some people, as you're listening to this, you can be like, no, 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 no. One of the things that I constantly tell people is you have to decide how bad you want your healing. And mm -hmm. I will say this, I started doing, when I was on my journey of infertility and healing, I started doing a lot more ancestral eating, um, really tapping down on spirit, uh, mind, body, soul. Um, and for everybody, you're going to find your own individual connection of what you're doing right but the point is we're not dealing with the trauma on a spiritual deep level like when you were talking about drumming and you were talking about movement like mm. those pieces are extremely they were important to my healing they were important yes. art um I'm saying. Music, very very yeah. very important and I always say like I know it, it's ancestral. Like it I is. know that this was something that they did to heal and how they did counseling and how they worked yes. on your mental health. But yes. we, have, we have almost whitewashed every single healing aspect. Um, now we have no options and we mm -hmm. don't know what to do and where to go. And then when we are somewhere under the bed looking mm -hmm. like really foo-foo, as we always yes. say, you know, we like, what do we need to do? And I'm loving that you're talking about bringing back this space of exploring yes. healing and you deciding what you want to do to get to that healing. Um, you decide what you feel that your body needs. And there may be times where you feel like, I don't want to take this step because this is not where I'm ready, but I'm ready to take this one. Right. You need to um, develop that and really engage in that and even more um, and not whitewash every single healing practice um, that that is out there because these things are very cultural based and we've got to get back to them.
Exactly. And I mean, that's the even the physical space of where the group is. It's in an art gallery filled with African art, Black art, local artists. The space is therapeutic within itself. Then we have the vibrational sound therapists coming in and doing sound baths. The indigenous yoga practitioner that's doing massages. And it's like, I'm just trying to give the people what I know we need to heal some of that generational trauma. I love it. Seven years that may be stored in, like, we got to go back. That's why I like, because we have to go back in order to go forward. We have to unlearn. We have to honor and acknowledge hmm. so that we can feel that as we move and know, like, oh, it's a reason why Black girls ain't twerking and shaking butt for it because that's just, oh, that's it. No, it's power in our hips. Mm. It's power in the womb. Solar plexus activated, sacral chakra, root chakra, like knowing when you see African women chanting, mm. dancing, moving their hips, it is magic. Mm. That is healing. It, we, we've been so misconstructed and it's like, no, it's the reason why we dance the way we dance because that's ancestral, baby. Let's get it. Y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she see me right now. You're not, like, not watching the video. <laughs> you are so funny. Because it's like, <laughs> even the chanting says something as simple as chanting. You listen, you go look at some, oh, yeah, some African chanting. You got festivals going on. Chanting. That is something already. We don't get together. We're not chanting together. No. But that is one practice that stimulates what we call your vagus nerve, that overrides anxiety that overrides this fight or flight response and will disrupt it. It's like, no wonder our ancestors ain't have things such as hypertension. No wonder our ancestors ain't had cancer and all this. It's not just food. It's also the, the element of the environment in which we used to communicate via the drum. The drum is healing. It's the heartbeat. The way you even learn, like that stimulates the vagus nerves. These natural elements that have been around us that were our healing tools that we know is taken out of our schools. <laughs> it's just not of access, uh, limited resources, all these things that just keep us away from the things that are our birthright. Birthright. Y'all, I am literally like holding back tears because this is so powerful. This is a powerful moment because so many people are in pain. And so many people are looking for something to bring that healing. So Dora, you hit that thing so tough, okay? Yeah. I, well, I literally was talking about this with somebody the other day and talking about culture and talking about how we create all of these different services in our community, right? But the mm -hmm. one thing we don't do is focus on building culture. When we walk into or we look around our communities, are we building culture? Are we teaching the next generation yes. how to pass down that? Yes. Um, yes. That's what I've been saying. People got generational wealth misconstrued. They've been thinking about it in money. I'm like, the generational wealth is in what you put in your kids. Yes. We're already creating generational wealth. Just millennial parents from our parents. Yes. We created generational wealth in a way that our children actually can express their feelings to us oh my god we didn't get to have no no we bring them into problem solving no you know oh so. my word this is this is so powerful Zador, if people want to connect with you and yes. want to learn more about sankofa okay she's right now she's, like, she's encompassing yes. sankofa so yes. tell us yeah where can they find you how yes. can they get connected and don't worry guys if you are driving all the information will be down below. All right. Everybody can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Sankofa underscore CFH. And that stands for Sankofa Center for Healing. I have a TikTok and a YouTube, y'all. I'm working on putting videos up on it. So y'all stay tuned. But I'm more active on Facebook and Instagram right now. And then you can also find out information on my website, which is currently under construction, getting rebranded, <laughs> but it is www.sankofacenterforhealing.com. I love so, it. 
and you guys know Sankofa is my word for the year. So this just like really spoke to me. Really? So it is. It is. I, I learned about the word Sankofa right before I had met you. Yes, that's I right. Felt, you did say that. Yep. yep. Um, in a training. And it was like, this is exactly where I'm at. Zadora, yep. I want to thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you for just pouring into our listeners. What's the one last thing you want our listeners to hear before we end our podcast today? is I'm going to say because since suicide has been heavy in the Black community, definitely, hey, go to my page. I talk about Black suicide multiple times on here. Youth videos and one with another, another mom who actually experiences suicide. So I want to say to those of you that may be out there thinking about suicide, having feelings of suicide, know that when you feel at your lowest, and I mean as cliche as it sounds, most of these cliches are real valid when you've been there so when you hit rock bottom baby know that that ain't the time to to end your life Mm. because what's on the other side of that rock is what you've been waiting for but you got to live through it to see it and Mm. I say that as someone who has battled suicidal ideation one attempt and working in the field and helping so many folks Mm. who have attempted suicide and have not been able to recover you know, physically because of how they done it. So being aware, like, hey, life is not over. Opposition is always there. But when your mindset and your mental health is well, you can know that, oh, this is just that, this is that thing. It always happens when I'm on the, when I'm on that path to greatness, when I'm actually healing, that's when things gonna start really seem to be going well, well, or going wrong when you're trying to get well. Mm. So stay mindful and know that when stuff get really rough, it's temporary. It won't mm. last forever. And what you're waiting for is on the other side. Y'all, I want to thank you so much for listening today. This was so heavy, y'all. I got to digest this thing. Yes. I want to thank you so much, Zadora. You guys, until next time, thank you so much for joining me here at The Learning Project. Thank you. Bye. Bye.